You are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are the light of the world. We have to keep on shining and letting the perfections of God, the, the fragrance of God within us to shine to the people that are around us so that when they see how we are doing things, then they will glorify our Father in heaven. Wow, what a wonderful time again uh, in the presence of God to learn and to discuss what Christ has done for us, what he has made us, who we have become in Christ. This is the Marvelous Believers Show, and it's always a pleasure to have you. It's always a pleasure to have this fellowship. And uh, let me encourage you maybe in a minute or two just to share this uh, video or this recording with a friend or a loved one so that we are all blessed. We are building the kingdom of God. We are growing together as the marvelous believers. We are sharing the good news or the gospel. I always say, if it is not good news, it is not the gospel. So everything that we share is the good news of who we have become in Christ. And I promise you day after day, we are becoming a beautiful bride for our Lord Jesus Christ. So welcome to the show again, and we are so excited to have you. Uh, today I am extremely very excited because I have a guest again with me in the studio. It is always nice when we hear this news from different people. We share different ideas and we get different revelations. So I am excited that tonight uh, we are able to have a guest with us, someone that I know, someone that is, uh, has been preaching the gospel for many years. Uh, someone that I know has a passion of who we have become in Christ, the new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So I am excited that we have uh, Eric in the studio. Thank you so much for making time to come. We are so happy that you're here. Uh, and I know this is only the beginning. We should be having you again and again. So uh, as we continue, let's share this video with as many people as we can. Encourage us, to let us know where you're watching us from, uh, maybe through the chat, the live chat, maybe through the comment session. Let's know what the Lord is speaking to you. You never know, you could be bringing out something that maybe I had not thought about. It's always a pleasure. Let me just say that we appreciate people that have been uh, giving us this fellowship in the live chat and encouraging us. Everything that you write there speaks to somebody. It is never for nothing. It speaks to somebody. So thank you for keeping it up with um, the Marvelous Believer Show. Let's get to the teaching for today, and God bless you as you listen. So uh, I think I will allow Eric to introduce himself, and then he can continue with the teaching. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. It's good to meet all of you today. I'm so excited to be driving the conversation on the marvelous believer uh, today. I'm happy to live in such a time like this when uh, Christians are rising up to understand what uh, Christ has already done for them. Isn't it amazing to just think and ponder upon the finished work <clears throat> of Christ on the cross, to just ponder upon the finished work of Christ on the cross? I Every time I think about this, I just... Imagine what it was before Christ accomplished the, the work and how it is now that we are living in a generation post the finished work of Christ on the cross. I'm very excited to share uh, my insights and also the things that I've learned over the time about this finished work of the cross. I know sometimes I've, I, I read somewhere that it is uh, derived from this Greek word called tetelestai, the Why do we keep on saying it is the finished work of, cross, of, of Christ on the cross? Because the last word that Jesus said before he cut his spirit, before he died, was actually it is finished. From the book of John chapter 19 verse 13. I want to just read that. John chapter, chapter uh, the book of John chapter uh, 19 verse 13. It was, uh, this was coming after a long day, one of the longest days that Jesus had. He had been betrayed on that same day. He had been rejected by his closest friends, his disciples. They had rejected him. He had been beaten up. He had been uh, rolled down. A lot of things had happened to our Savior on that particular day. 
and they had now hung him on the cross. And at the tail end of this uh, part of uh, the problems that he was going through, he was very thirsty. And so he asked them to uh, give him a cup of water. So in verse 30, he says, when Jesus had received the sour wine, because instead of giving him water, they actually gave him sour wine. They gave him bad wine. And they had already not only tortured him and excruciated him the whole day, but what they are doing to him right now, they are now not even giving him his last request. They are giving him sour wine instead of the water that he had asked for when he said, I am thirsty. So they gave him a jar of sour wine. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Bowing his head, he yielded up his spirit. Wow. So I'm just looking at what Jesus had gone through. And at this time, he's realizing that my mission has been accomplished. What I came to do has been done. So I keep thinking, what is this finished work of the cross? And some religions argue that, you know, you can, uh, we know that Jesus came. We know that he was a good man. We know that he was a good person. We know uh, this Jesus was, was one of the best people in history. But really, do we have Christianity without the finished work on the cross? My answer to that question, we cannot have Christianity without the finished work on the cross. Without the cross, Christianity loses faith. It loses its meaning. We cannot have people that are, are, are in Christianity because of good deeds. We cannot reject the power of the cross. The power of the cross has to be central in everything that we believe. And I like how Paul approaches this whole topic. I, uh, I, I was just going through the book of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, just going through the, the approach, the unique approach that Paul had on what exactly uh, is perspective on, on, on the, the message of the cross and the finished work of the cross. And he was talking to the Corinthians and was telling them, when I came to you brothers from verse 1, I did not come with eloquence or wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. I resolved to know uh, nothing while I was with you except Jesus and him crucified. And this is Paul talking about really denying or deliberately refusing to follow the ways of wisdom. It's a Jewish community that valued wisdom. Wisdom has been mentioned two, over 222 times in the Bible. It has been referenced so many times because it was part and parcel of the Jewish culture. It was one of the most esteemed values within the Jewish community. So, uh, in fact, one of the references to wisdom in the Bible, in the New Testament, is the Magi that came to see Jesus. They were wise men who came to see Jesus bearing gifts, frankincense, gold, myrrh, you know. They are coming with these gifts and they are being referenced as wise men. So, really, when Paul is talking about him having the option of coming with wisdom, it is because Paul himself was not lacking in wisdom. There is a part where Paul actually explains who he was and gives reference to his history in the law and in Judaism, how much he had grown in wisdom and how much he knew the law, how much he was a revered man in the society. And so we cannot by any chance mistake Paul to be a man that was lacking in wisdom in any way. He was a man who was wise. But in this particular context of 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 2, so Paul is saying, that I did not come to you with this wisdom. In, in other words, he deliberately chose not to go to the Corinthians with the wisdom that he had learned over time. He deliberately chose to ignore the wisdom so that he can be effective in preaching the message of the cross. So believers, what I'm saying is, it has to be a deliberate choice for us to prioritize the message of the cross in our hearts. Every time we are making decisions even in our, in, in our day-to-day -day life. The message of the cross, the finished work of the cross, has to be our reference point. And it doesn't come by default. It has to come as a result of us making a deliberate choice. So what are some of the things that the finished work of the cross has done uh, to, to our lives? The first thing that I can just quickly mention there is found in the book of 
Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Just quickly, uh, let me just open that for you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. So the Bible says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. And then verse 13, it says, he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved son. So these are some of the results of the finished work of the cross. So in verse 12, talking about the fact that we have already been qualified to share in the inheritance of his son. And these are some of the things that were bringing chaos even to the Jewish community. When uh, the community had lived with these priests, they had lived with these people that had to qualify to become priests through years and years of training, through a calling, through how you were born, you felt like you have done something to qualify. And now Jesus is saying, he has already qualified you. You do not need any further qualifications. You do not need any further education. You don't need to go to school. You don't need theology. The fact that you are born again as a believer, you are qualified. You have been qualified. You have been given all the qualifications. You have already passed the test. You are already inside. Now that you are inside, it is now your work to dominate. You have actually been qualified to share in the inheritance of the son. So what we are saying is that we are actually co with Christ. We are co with Christ. He is one of the heirs, but we are also heirs. The things that he can do, we have also been qualified to do them. You do not need an experience. The fact that you believe in Jesus as a believer, you can do those things. You are qualified to do them. You are not underqualified. You are already fully qualified. You stand qualified as we speak. You don't need anybody to, to, to give you permission. You don't need anybody to, to, to pat you on the back to tell you that you can now start. Just the fact that you have given your life to Christ, you have been qualified. You have been qualified and you have also been justified, which means you have been made right with God. You don't need to, uh, to uh, your sins have actually been taken away from you as far as the east is from the west. That is what the psalmist says, as far as the east is from the west as he parted away from my sins. So your sins have already been taken away, you've been qualified and you've been justified, which means uh, as you get into the inheritance of the son, you can get in with boldness. Hallelujah. So uh, the other thing that the Bible says here in in uh, First Corinth in, in Colossians, the other thing that the Bible says here in Colossians is that you have been rescued from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of his beloved son. What does this mean? Other versions say you have been moved from the kingdom of darkness and conveyed into the kingdom of the beloved son. So this means that we were living under the dominion of a different kingdom. We were living in darkness. We were living in futility. We were living lives that are not going anywhere, living in futility. And now that has all been transformed by the finished work of the cross. Now we are living in the kingdom of light. We are sons of light. And I like how Matthew, in the book of Matthew, Jesus put it when he was demonstrating to us that we are actually uh, we've been brought to light. He said, you are the light of the world. I just want to open that in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 5. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 14, the Bible says, You are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither people do they light a lamp and put it under the basket. 
Instead, they set it on a stand where the light gives light to everyone. In the same way, let your light shine before all men so that people will see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. So I just like how Jesus sees us. He sees us as, as if we are living in a generation that is in darkness. And when we light this light that he has given us, we cannot hide it under the table where it cannot be seen. We cannot put it where the light will not shine. We have to keep on shining wherever we are, where, whether it's at work, whether it's with the people that we are interacting with, even in the games that we play, we have to let our light shine so brightly. And what is the reaction of people when they see our light shining is that they will glorify our Father in heaven. We are the light of the world. We cannot be hidden. We are actually a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We have been placed in a place where we cannot be hidden. No matter whether people try to hide it or not, we cannot be hidden. We are a city on a hill. We are the light of the world. We have to keep on shining and letting the effervescence of God, the, the fragrance of God within us to shine to the people that are around us so that when they see how we are doing things, then they will glorify our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. I like just the fact that God has given all these things freely to us as marvelous believers because they are part of the finished work of the cross. There are so many things that the finished work of the cross has accomplished for us. What Christ has done to us when he said those words, there is so much that changed for us believers and it is upon us to partake of it. Hallelujah. I would like to just pray for us quickly as, as, as we go on with this uh, uh, good Christian life so that even as we go out there, as we interact with people, our light can continue shining. We can also let, let our light shine into the world and people will see us and they will glorify our Father in heaven. Uh, let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We glorify your name because of who you have made us in you. Thank you because of the finished work of the cross. Thank you because of what you have done for us. Thank you because it is all done. Thank you because we are now sharing the inheritance of the Son. You have given it all for us to us for free. You have already qualified us. You have made us worthy to partake of it. You have made us the light of the world. You have let us shine. You have given us the power to project our shine to the world and people will see us and glorify our Father in heaven. Let, teach us how to act, how to let our light shine, how to let our actions shine in our environments, in the people that we interact with, and uh, people will glorify our Father in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. That was wonderful. That was powerful. I know you are blessed. I thank God for that uh, teaching. Thank you so much, Eric, for that session and for what has come out. For me, I don't know about you, but I'm so encouraged and um, I'm just thinking what he was saying that uh, it is a an intentional, deliberate uh, decision to include the knowledge that we have of the finished work of Christ in our everyday life, deliberately, intentionally, so that nothing comes and you think I cannot handle. We have been made marvelous. Christ, the Bible says Jesus came as the light, and then Jesus says, you are the light. That is just to say what uh, Eric was saying. What he can do, he can do. So we are not people that get disturbed. We are not people that get destabilized. We are not people that think this mountain is too big. We have been made marvelous. You and Christ, there is nothing you cannot conquer. You have been made marvelous. Let this light, let this knowledge of who you are, of the light that you carry, so shine that our God in heaven is glorified. That was a beautiful teaching. I, I am sure we will be able to bring uh, you again on this show, and uh, we continue learning as, as you continue even uh, giving us your version and uh, your own revelation of this marvelous believer's life. Thank you for keeping up with us. Thank you for watching us. Uh, continue sharing this recording, and uh, let's meet again uh, on the same show with a different teaching again. Uh, keep it up, uh, Wema TV, the marvelous believer's show, and God bless you.